All right, good afternoon, guys, gals. How's everyone doing this afternoon? Um, hey, there's something I want to talk about real quick. All right, not only being an extreme weather chaser and uh, chasing naders and all that stuff, um, I also have a, a uh, big heart for wildlife in Oklahoma. All right, right now we have wildlife everywhere. It's crazy, okay? We've got stuff that don't belong where they're at, okay? But the floodwaters are so high, it's pushing wildlife out everywhere, okay? We've got, we, you know, we, we've got stuff that's not supposed to be here, okay, right now, okay? So, here's what I want to talk about right now is I want to lay to rest some, some myths about snakes in Oklahoma, okay? 99% of the people in Oklahoma assume if they see a snake, it's a water moccasin or it's a rattlesnake. Guys, that's not the truth, okay? Just because there's a snake in the water or by the water does not mean it is a cottonmouth water moccasin, all right? Just because there's a snake going across the street does not mean it's a western diamondback rattling snake okay there's a difference okay there's a way to tell the difference between venomous and non-venomous snakes in oklahoma and if you listen to me step by step you will be able to better identify snakes and you won't be having to get on facebook and saying hey guys what kind of snake is this all right if you listen to me you're not going to have to post about a snake anymore on Facebook, I guarantee it. Okay? All right. Or I'll give you your money back. I promise. All right. Here's how you identify snakes in Oklahoma. Keep in mind, Oklahoma does have both venomous and non-venomous snakes. Okay? The only place in the world that does not have snakes on it at all is Greenland. Okay, so every place in the world has got snakes to include Oklahoma. All right, so here's the deal. I'm going to tell you how to break down and how to identify poisonous amongst non-poisonous. All right, non-poisonous snakes are your everyday common snake that you see in Oklahoma. Okay, all right. A non-poisonous snake will have a rounded head, okay, a rounded front nose, okay, on the front of its body, okay. It will also have round pupils like a human's, all right? And um, that is how you identify a non-poisonous snake. Now, I know cobras have round pupils as well, okay, and have a rounded nose, so you say, I just contradicted myself. Folks, I'm talking about snakes in Oklahoma. I'm not talking about snakes in Africa, Zimbabwe, or any place like that. I'm talking about snakes in Oklahoma, and this is what I know, all right? So, a non-poisonous snake will have more of a rounded front on its head, okay? It will also have round pupils like a human. Okay, completely, completely non-lethal. Okay, now, how do you identify a poisonous snake in Oklahoma? Okay, well, we have poisonous snakes in Oklahoma go from anywhere from a western diamondback rattler to a timber rattler to a pygmy rattler to copperheads. Okay, now, the way you identify these snakes is not only by color of their skin, all right, and the obvious rattle on their tail, okay. Um, they have more of a diamond shape or a triangle shape head, okay. And they also have cat eyes, okay, slitted pupils, okay. And they also have pits, on the front of their nose or on the side of their on their face okay now what this means to us is the slanted pupils identify it as a poisonous snake 
the more triangle shaped head is means that they devour bigger prey. They're able to open their jaws up bigger. They got to have a different head shape so they can eat bigger prey. Okay. Now, the uh, the pits on the front of their nose, those are heat sensing pits. All right, guys. These uh, vipers or these snakes are in the viper family, okay? Vipers depend on heat in order to get their prey, okay? So, now, what you're going to see with the rattlesnake are the classic warning signs when you come up on one, okay? If you startle a rattlesnake, okay, more than likely, it's just going to try to get out of the area of occupation. If not, it's going to coil up. Okay, it's got to be in the coiled position, all right, to strike. Okay, so it will coil up, it will rattle its tail, and you know it's a you know it's a rattlesnake. All right, now keep in mind too, if you see one of these rattlesnakes and you walk up on it and it's curled up, it can strike one third of its body length. Okay, all right, so if it's a six foot rattlesnake, one third of that is two foot. That's common math, people. I went to Chisholm High School, I learned that there, okay? So that means it can lunge two feet in front of it to get its prey, okay? So stay away from it. If it's rattling, if it's coiled up, stay away from it, all right? Common sense, people. All right, copperheads, kind of a different story, all right? They're kind of a grayish-looking snake, all right? Um, and they're smaller, okay? Now, what's unique about the copperhead is when they have young, the copperhead babies have little yellow tails on them to look like worms to attract um, prey, okay? Kids think that these snakes look pretty cool, because they have a yellow tail, and it's been known that kids have been bit by bringing or picking up baby um, um, copperheads, okay? So, if you see a baby snake with a yellow tail on it, it's a baby copperhead, okay? I think they're already done producing for the year. If not, they've already washed down the river, Okay. So anyway, now let's talk about the most common misconception in Oklahoma, the cotton mouth water moccasin. All right, guys? Now, everybody thinks that, okay, there's a snake in the water, it's a cotton mouth. Folks, that's simply not true. You have water snakes that live in the water, that hunt for fish, that hunt for turtles or whatever, they can fit in their mouth, and what they do is they go completely underwater to look for their prey, okay? Now, I'm not saying a rattlesnake won't eat a fish, okay? It might, okay? But here's the deal. If that snake goes underwater and stays underwater, it's not a poisonous snake, people. It's not a cotton mouth, okay? A cotton mouth will float on top of the water, okay? It fills its lungs with air, and it suspends itself on top of the water, okay? And it rides the current to wherever it's going to go, okay? Now, also with the cotton mouth, if you see it on dry land, more than likely you're going to smell it before you see it, okay? It puts off a musky odor, okay? So, you're going to more than likely smell it before you see it. So if you smell kind of a musky, pungent odor, um, it's a good chance that there's one there, okay? Then a way that it protects itself is it opens its mouth. And when it opens its mouth, if it's all white, okay, it's a cotton mouth, all right? That's where it gets its name. It's easy to identify. Guys, again... It has the diamond head shape on it, okay? It doesn't have a rounded head like your regular water snake has, okay? 
it's going to float on top of the water, whereas the non-poisonous don't do that. Okay, so if you see a snake floating on the water, it's more than likely a venomous snake. All right? If it goes underwater and stays underwater, forget about it. It ain't going to hurt nothing. All right? That's the easiest way I can tell you to identify snakes in Oklahoma. All right? So, don't keep on coming on Facebook posting that, you know, hey, I found this snake. I think it's a water moccasin. You know, um, no, it's not a water moccasin, folks. Okay, you know, so um, if it's floating on the water, if it's got a diamond-shaped head, if it's got cat-eye pupils, it's a poisonous snake. All right? That's how you identify snakes in Oklahoma. All right? So, if I can save anybody the misery today of, of wondering if they have a you know, a, a gaboon viper in their backyard, you know, I've done my job, okay? Um, so, guys, let the snakes do what they do, all right? Stay away from the poisonous ones, all right? If they're floating on the water, if they're rattling at you, anything like that, stay away from them. If they got cat eyes, stay away from them, all right? If they got a diamond-shaped head, stay away from them, all right? Stay away from them. If they don't fall in that category, it's a completely harmless it's a completely harmless snake. All right? That's how I can break it down for you, oaky style. All right? So share this with your friends. All right? Uh, subscribe subscribe to my page at SSG Grub OK. And um, you'll be able to see more videos, more informational videos like this. Not only do I chase naders and floods and all that, I will also bring you, you know, some common knowledge stuff like today, all right? Okay, so we're all squared away. We all know about how to identify snakes now. So let's go out. Let's have a good day. Let's have fun. Leave the snakes alone. Do what you need to do. Let's coexist and let's let's just go on. All right, guys. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.